I would like to welcome you to the Teddy talk series on Levant's creative impetus on the rise. And I would like to invite you to connect with the buoyant cultural scenes of the region. So we will have five live talks here on Facebook or on Zoom with experienced artists from different backgrounds from Lebanon, Jordan, and Iraq in the coming days, highlighting the work of these inspiring artists and thus adding to the visibility of the creative and cultural scenes and cultural industries in the MENA region. The Abtedi Knowledge Platform, which is organizing these talks, is part of the project Cultural and Creative Industries, which is implemented by the GIZ on behalf of the German Federal Ministry for Economic Cooperation and Development and in cooperation with the Goethe Institute. This project improves employment and income opportunities for creative professionals in six partner countries, Lebanon, Jordan, Iraq, Kenya, Senegal, and South Africa, and operates mainly in the music, fashion, design, and animation sectors. In addition to promoting the development of entrepreneurial, digital, creative, and technical skills through training programs, the project aims to strengthen the framework conditions and the ecosystem of the cultural and creative industries. And last but not least, this talk series was curated and will be conducted by Nicole Hamouche from Beirut, a journalist and a consultant on creative industries. And that being said, Nicole, I would like to give over to you and to our inspiring guests, Magda Malkoun and Lina Hussein. Thank you very much, uh, Salma. Thank you for always uh, being around and uh, putting forward the creative and cultural scene in, in the Levant and in Lebanon as well. Um, I have had the chance uh, a couple of years ago to uh, also curate and moderate such talks. And now is the second edition with very inspiring, I hope at least, uh, artists uh, from the region. Um, I have the great pleasure to welcome uh, Magda Malkoun and Lina Husseini. And um, I, I want first also to mention that this initiative is also for us uh, the opportunity to orient our gaze even in difficult times, such as the ones we are going through in Lebanon, on beauty and creativity, which we tend to forget when we are in survival mode. So I really, Salma, want to thank you again for this assignment um, to search for beauty and inspirational and arty stories, since art is the way for freedom per excellence. And when we are in survival mode, uh, we are not anymore in freedom. So, so thank you for this. Uh, and I have to, to, to tell that when I uh, met both Lina Husseini and Sandra Malkoun, it was in an exhibition that was organized by uh, artists of Beirut, a collective, and that happened after the Beirut blast. And uh, after the crisis or within the crisis because, because we are still in the crisis. And uh, these two ladies grabbed my attention because both of them have uh, particular trajectories in uh, the artistic scene. Uh, both chose to dedicate themselves to their art in the last years, despite all uh, the ups and downs we we were all the downs we were going through. Both are self-taught, both are uh, uh, self-made artists, and uh, they were both very much moved by the October Revolution, the explosion, and the financial and economic um, distress and situation that, that we are going through. And as we know, women are often the first to express and to shake the statu quo. Um, so I'm gonna, I really uh, want to, wanted to, to, to show these similarities in those trajectories that are uh, distinguished in the artistic scene uh, somehow, and that are rather recent. Uh, both of you, I think, have uh, had careers in the past that were more in the corporate life somehow in the business life and both have chosen to move away from this and to follow uh, your own inspiration. 
Um, I, I will start introducing uh, Magda and uh, Lina. So Magda, uh, the youngest, we're gonna invert the order. Usually we start uh, with uh, the senior, but now we're gonna start with, with the youngest. You are a multifaceted artist. Um, you, uh, you were always interested in collage since your childhood. And it's your thought process that was always animated by collage. Your work encompasses a series of figurative art and abstract art and is inspired principally by displacement, conflict, and the relation to the homeland. You live in uh, Dubai, back and forth between Beirut and Dubai. And uh, it seems that the relationship to Beirut is really what is driving and 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 the displacement and the exile uh, is, is really what is driving your, uh, your art. And uh, after the Beirut blast in particular, and we'll speak more in details about this uh, when we'll uh, delve together. Um, after the Beirut blast, you were, um, you took your art to another technique, to other processes, to another dimension. And uh, you are also a well-known figure of the NFT scene. Uh, so this is why use is also interesting because they introduce us to, to new uh, artistic possibilities. And you were also described by Art Dubai as the best emerging artist of 2021. So we are very happy to have you here sharing uh, with us your experience. Lina. Lina Husseini, uh, you started less than 10 years ago. And in this sense, you are also a young artist. Uh, you are self-taught, you work, uh, you started with papier mache. I don't know how we say this in English, neither in Arabic. Uh, how would you say papier mache, also. Lina? Yes, papier mache also. Papier mache, okay. Papier mache uh, in English. So papier mache, wood, uh, plexiglass, and then you have introduced various uh, uh, materials and fabrics and lately PVC. So in this sense, you are also very young and modern because you are uh, exploring modern uh, material. You also at some stage uh, uh, worked on recycling some material. And uh, what distinguishes your art, as we can see behind you, is its cheerfulness, its playfulness, and uh, it's spontaneity, spontaneity. And uh, in, in, this, in your process, your artistic process as well, what is very interesting is again, despite the years, the spontaneity that you explore and that you have kept. Um, you don't have specific themes, perhaps like Magda, this is at least what you pretend. But when we look at your website, we also do see uh, some recurring themes of women, uh, of a tribute to Beirut. Um, so in this sense also, uh, you are a universal artist because of your pop, cheerfulness, uh, uh, and at the same time, very much inspired uh, by the homeland and, yeah. and, and by your belonging. So I'm going to uh, start uh, by asking uh, Magda if you can share with us a little bit uh, your journey and how you start and your, your, your inspiration and your art, how your techniques have changed, what did inspire you and how you have evolved in the last years. Yes. Uh, and the same to Lina afterwards. Yeah. Thank you so much, Nicole, for the nice introduction. Uh, you summarized very well, uh, like my journey. Um, first of all, I started uh, like painting and drawing since uh, since a long time ago, since two thousand five. But ever since, since I was a little girl, I've been sketching uh, and and drawing. Drawing has never left me in any way. Uh, so in 2005, I started uh, with the oil painting, <clears throat> um, with abstract and figurative art. Then I discovered the, the mixed media. So I wanted to explore mixed media as a technique, and I fell in love with it. 
So I started also abstract mixed media in 2015. And uh, because I love portraits and I love uh, the emotions and I love to depict, depict uh, the emotions behind the, the individual, I wanted to merge these two together, the, the mixed media and and uh, the portrait and uh, right before the blast I was researching how can I do that and I did some uh, small studies and uh, small uh, paintings about like using uh, collage of uh, from magazines and uh, and uh, things I could find and I always collected uh, throughout my travels I like to take photos I like to photograph everything especially doors and windows I don't know why but they speak <laughs> to me I, I feel like they have especially old doors and windows and the 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 walls that are they have the paint scratched from it or because I feel they have a soul and they have they tell us something they tell a story and they have they have a soul so I always when I travel I take these photographs especially in Lebanon uh, because I'm, I'm because I live in Dubai and in Lebanon at the same time so I see this uh, contradiction uh, between very new, very modern buildings in Dubai and and uh, the the spirit and the history of the buildings in Lebanon, which I miss a lot. So I believe these things that each photograph tells a story and each uh, photo tell uh, makes me feel about a memory, a nostalgic memory, or or uh, or takes me back to a moment in time. So when uh, when the blast happened. Um, uh, of course, we were all shocked. So I wanted, uh, the idea came to me that I wanted to document this historic event because we shouldn't forget it. And I didn't want that the, the social media craze of the pictures of the blast and uh, it, will, it will come and go. Soon enough, people will be distracted by something else and people will move on. So it was something very uh, touching for me to to document, especially that I, I lived all my life uh, in Lebanon and all my life was during the war uh, on and off, on and off. So for me, it was a repeated, um, uh, repeat, repeating history, repeating itself. So uh, I got inspired mainly by Jibran, Khalil Jibran. He said that uh, uh, all the strong characters in the world are are marked with the scars on their faces. So it reminded me also of the strength of the people of Lebanon and how much we suffered and how much we are why we are strong and why when we travel we succeed and we 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 strive to succeed because we don't have any option but to succeed and uh, and to 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 evolve. So. Um, that's why I, I had the idea of making the portraits and I started with very abstract portraits, uh, deformed the faces of, of, of the female, uh, which I call her Beirut as a female because Beirut reminds me of the, the resilience of the city because it has been destroyed so many times, it reminds me of the resilience of women in general and the resilience of us human beings uh, when we face loss and destruction and how our strengths to re recreate ourselves again. So this is how it started at the beginning, uh, the portraits of uh, Beirut with the scars with the deformed uh, faces. And I used uh, pictures, first of all, from the newspapers. And then, then I went, back to Beirut after the blast, right after the blast. And I and I did this research. I took four days. I rented a taxi. He would drop me somewhere and wait for me. And I would go uh, take photographs. And I tell you, Nicole, I couldn't last for two hours only. I could do two or three hours maximum. And it was so emotional, so hard to see, so heartbreaking uh, to see that all these walls, the scratched uh, paint on the wall that reminds me of the history are, are gone. So even if we refurbish the, the place, we, re we rebuild new, it's, it's a new building. So it has a new story to tell, but all the old stories, the old memories, the smell of the street, the smell of the old um, uh, bricks, the bricks and stones that we had are all gone. So it uh, it was very heartbreaking for me. 
So this is why I wanted to document everything uh, and and create uh, the, the portraits of Beirut in, in that sense. And so, but uh, you didn't really, it's not just about documenting because what's interesting also what I would like you to share, I mean, if I understood correctly, and this is the beauty of your art and its particularity, is this deconstruction after you took the photos, you're, yeah. you're cutting everything and doing the collage. And yes, I think exactly. this is really what, and, and, and instead of taking a magazine uh, as you did first, first, yes. if I understood correctly, in the past, you used to take magazines and cut. Now yes. you are doing the whole photos and then you have the courage to cut the photos that you have done yourself yeah, and uh, to, 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 decon yeah. to deconstruct yeah. in order to reconstruct. And exactly. I think this is really one uh, uh, a uh, feature very distinguished in your art and 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 the really the the this uh uh yeah this uh lack of fear of destroying your own photographies that you spent hours doing in yes. order to reconstruct and to do uh to do the 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 beautiful portraits yeah, um, do, that's do, why the, the 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 process because we've been living this all our life seeing destruction and reconstruction. And this is the strength I had maybe from living in and being raised in Beirut about seeing this transformation over and over again. And this is like, like a sample of the pictures I take, maybe I don't know if it's visible. Uh, so I cut them in very detail. I take out whatever I want from it and, uh, and to reconstruct again a face because this is what it's all about. This is a message of hope and uh, the message of resilience that even if we cut and destroy, we can rebuild it again into something very beautiful. And, Magda, uh, and hope is still uh, there. We got it. We're going to take you as our ambassador. <laughs> <laughs> خلاص, خلاص. We got it that we are going to. <laughs> OK, Magda, address one question. Are you uh, only focused on portraits so far? Uh, the second and only series. on women and only on women's portraits mm. also so far so far yes <laughs> i had uh, some abstract paintings of um, like abstract painting that you cannot tell if it's a woman or or a man because i focus more on the feelings behind it exactly uh, the, the second series was more like women um and uh, now I'm working on a third series, uh, which I didn't reveal yet. It's the full body of, of, of women as well, because... So you're going uh, down grounding in the body. <laughs> okay. in the body because I feel like um, the relationship we have between destruction and the void it creates, um, it's a back and forth relationship between destruction, the void. And when you have a void, you have emptiness and you have a chance to build something new. So it has hope. It has a fear before that, oh, you lost everything. It's empty. And then you have okay. a, a, a something. So it reminds me of okay, uh, like a dance yeah. or a chore choreography. Yeah. So that's why I thought of a moving, the moving body would be like a good way to depict that. Okay, Magda, actually, just speaking of this, uh, I invite you, if you're interested in this, tomorrow we're having a talk with a dancer, Bassam Abu Diab, a choreographer as well, and he's exploring exactly uh, these questions of uh, trauma and the body and uh, the memory in the body, etc. So I, I just uh, uh, want to now finish on this. Uh, I would like to ask you, since you mentioned hope uh, and you mentioned this, uh, um, this piece of art behind you is this the one that is called hope and uh, also, hope. Yeah. yeah and also I would like you um, to tell us a few words about uh, your um, distinction at uh, Sotheby Institute of Art which is like a huge recognition and how you answered to an open call and how you were distinguished can you share in a few moments because we want to listen to Lena as well and then we'll go back and forth. Yeah, there was a competition in uh, New York uh, sponsored by Thosseby Institute of, uh, of Art. And I applied and the theme was about roots. 
our our roots and uh, the, so i applied the um, uh, painting called contemplation and i got selected between like it was an international open call i was selected between um, um 12, uh, 12 or 15 artists to exhibit in uh, in new york uh, with uh, with them so this was the like the recognition i had and uh, it was it was really amazing to be like chosen among uh, a lot of artists uh, to be, and they only chose and Sotheby's. And, yeah, uh, I mean, and Sotheby's, <laughs> and uh, like this is very inspiring. Uh, I'll, uh, I'll come back to you, uh, uh, Magda, and to the internationalization uh, of Magda Malkun in in a moment. Uh, I would like Elina also to to listen about your creation process and inspiration and your journey uh, in the last years in particular, but uh, but before. And also if you could share with us in this evolution, uh, your recent uh, exploration of PVC and the uniqueness that you have, thanks to this collaboration with your husband somehow. I mean, with what your husband provides you with. <laughs> so hello <laughs> to the husband if he's here as well. <laughs> Okay. He's always around, maybe. <laughs> I, I saw him before. I saw him like on the camera a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> I, I say, uh, first of all, thank you for inviting me to this talk. Uh, it is a great pleasure, Nicole. And um, so I want to introduce myself. So, uh, I, I'm a self taught artist. I started in uh, 2013. Um, um, uh, I started with sculpting with papier mache. And then I felt uh, a thirst uh, to explore uh, more material. Uh, so I started with wood and metal and plexiglass and recycled objects. And um, uh, I started more with figurative uh sculptures uh and uh, uh the sculptures always uh, most of them had have a, a certain sense of humor why this sense of humor because i lived the uh, first i lived the civil war then we had the uh, explosion of uh, the august 4th so uh, for me, it's a, a way to not to forget because we cannot forget this uh, dramatic uh, uh, episode in our life, but it's a way for me to, um, uh, how we say, uh, to live our life more with joyful way, in a joyful way, uh, to see more optimism, to be, um, uh, to feel uh, happiness, so uh, that's uh, it's my way to express myself, to externalize uh, my uh, my feelings, uh, and um, then I uh, move to and uh, through uh, even if it is a, a playfulness uh, uh, sculptures that I have always uh, uh, messages to convey. And um, I think uh, we can uh, convey uh, in a joyful way, joyful manner, uh, in order to be uh, more easily, the messages will be more easily accepted when in this manner we can uh, relate them. Um, so, uh, like uh, uh, serious topics uh, such as uh, against intolerance or uh, stigmatization or uh, women discrimination, uh, my way to, uh, uh, to talk about this is through colors and through a, a sense of humor and uh, joyful joyfulness cheerfulness so yes uh, uh, but lina yes but lina actually uh, you mentioned this it's true but uh, you do have also sculptures 
um, that are called overwhelming power, abyss, survival from a thousand cuts, disconnect, yes. talking to myself. <laughs> Laura, yes. so so <laughs> is there any of these behind you or no, actually? They're not here. Yes, 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 yes. I have, uh, uh, I'm sorry, I have uh, this one, if you see uh, overwhelming power. Say uh, local, the one that is standing or? Uh, yes, yeah, it's yeah, sitting yeah. here, the big yes. ones. Yes. It's made of it's made of wood and very color, very colorful and yes. um, uh, it's, uh, it, uh, it, it speaks about uh, uh, how when people uh, has has power so can you see can you yes, see Yes, yes, very well. Very well. Ah, c'est très sympa. We see him like uh, il est enflé. He's uh, <laughs> yes, and uh, yeah. he's uh, like uh, uh, standing on people. Yeah. So it's uh, it's when uh, and uh, here it's uh, a survival of a uh, uh, thousand cuts. Yeah. Do you see it in? Uh, yes. It is in a, in a box in a plexiglass. It is a clay. And uh, the the personage is cut it in in uh, yes uh, yes many uh, pieces I would say yeah <laughs> layers so, uh, many pieces yeah many pieces yes and uh, this is the it, it talks about our situation our daily situation how we are uh, suffering from uh, from the 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 lack of let's say the the basic uh, what we need or the economic crisis so it is like and also it represents people who were injured in the explosion and they are they they are suffering mental, mentally and physically so it represents the Liban, the lebanese people how they are uh, like cut yes. in, into several pieces uh, but um, uh, it is colorful because I want to say that we can um, uh, overcome, overcome, overla overcome. Uh, overcome the, this situation by being optimistic and being uh, uh, yes. having hope. So yeah, Lina. Yes. yes. And, and, and so speaking of this, as you mentioned, the thousand cuts, uh, you make me think of also this um, exhibition you participated to in Chicago, uh, in Peoria Museum. Uh, can you also share this uh, very briefly, because we don't have much time and I want to go on other subjects, how you mm -hmm. were uh, part of this exhibition in Chicago? And after that, how uh, you were uh, uh, a piece of yours was bought uh, to be in the permanent collection of Peoria, and all this happened after the Beirut blast. Um, yes, um, it was uh, uh, an exhibition for uh, dedicated to a humanitarian cause. It was curated uh, by Dr. Tony Karam, so he selected the. Uh, around 25 artists and uh, uh, also by uh, the, the curators of the museum also they selected also the artists and then we I went there uh, not all the artists went there we were uh, five artists we went uh, to Peoria it's next to Chicago we went there and uh, to uh, to represent the other artists and to talk about uh, our arts and the Lebanese artists and Lebanese art and how we are fighting daily uh, and to, um, to to let uh, people see uh, a good image of us and our, of our art and to export our art. Uh, not always talking about um, drama and uh, always uh, like uh, crying. We want to say no, we... We, we can create know. and give to the world. <laughs> yes, that's yeah. that's the image we want to give, and uh, we were uh, four artists, uh, uh, whom their their uh, our uh, artworks were selected, 
and uh, mine it's uh, one uh, PVC sculpture was selected and uh, uh, they selected for the permanent uh, it was uh, uh, donated as a gift and they selected for their permanent collection okay uh, so you are also gifting the us it's nice of you uh, <laughs> yeah. could, uh, another uh, another thing that i would like you uh, uh, since you mentioned pvc and since i mentioned your husband but you forgot him i would like you to to tell us a few words about uh, this exploration of pvc and your recent uh, technique and art Please, yes. can you share about uh, this, where you are sure. unique in this sense? Sure, I, I started in 2019 uh, uh, after uh, I, I said I, I needed to explore more and more materials. So, uh, and uh, my husband is in the industry of PVC and I say, uh, why not to uh, seize the opportunity and to to, to try to test uh, uh, this material. And uh, I, uh, I tried this material and I found it was very interesting. Uh, it is, uh, I, work, I work this material at, at a very high temperature and um, I mold and remold uh, manually. Uh, till I um, till I see if the, the when it, if it speaks to me I, I stop the, the, the to, to work it and then I uh, I paint it so uh, it, it's um, it's a very challenging because it's a way to transform an industrial material to a, a piece of art uh, it, it is not very common uh, and it is a, a new, a new uh, material to, to explore. So uh, it, it's not really, it's not very easy to. I, I have to to see uh, uh, what, uh, how can I uh, re, uh, heat it, or how can I, uh, uh, um, how we say, uh, obtain this uh, shape. There are. Um, also, they are three-dimensional, so I have to be uh, satisfied from all sides. And um, they are very aerial and sensual, um, like, uh, like a woman. So, <laughs> uh, and very colorful because it's my message. I want to bring always joy and happiness into, uh, for people and into their uh, homes. So uh, I can uh, show you, uh, here is, uh, I don't know if you see, uh, this is a, a PVC sculpture. Do you see the, the forms, the shapes? Yes. The, the curves, point. very, very, uh, very sensual, <laughs> very aerial, aerial uh, uh, forms. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and very colorful. So actually, yes, and actually, Lina, uh, uh, we observe that your art and the shapes have evolved, actually, when I look at your website, as we spoke yesterday, like first it was more figurative, and now you're moving more towards abstraction. Um, yes. So also what I would like you to tell us a little bit, which, we, which is very interesting, as you mentioned, that it's the gesture of your hand that leads you and that you do not have initially necessarily uh, uh, um, a specific theme in mind, a specific shape in mind, but you let whatever arises in the moment and the gesture lead you actually. Is this, is this, uh, is this correct? And like, do you have anything to say with this respect, which is a lot of freedom and of trust also? Yeah, it, it, it is. It is a, a, an intuitive process and very spontaneous. I do not uh, draw sketches before. It's um, really my intuition uh, that guides me uh, to, to shape them. And uh, it's really a feeling when I feel that I am really satisfied. So I stop and I say, this is the one. Uh, 
it is uh, I, I, it's an interaction with my my sculptures, uh, really in, in, in spontaneous, and maybe maybe unconsciously um, the feelings uh, and dictated dictate my hand to to remold it in this way or in another way. Uh, it is. But it actually, is, even but actually, even if you don't have a spe specific theme in mind when you start. Uh, uh, you actually finally are inhabited by the experience of whatever you are living at the moment, which, which, which makes us have sculptures such as a tribute to Beirut, or uh, you know, a series of women or tributes, or you know, finally, uh, um, this, despite everything, some themes in relation perhaps to what you are living in the moment, right? Even if you don't yeah, have yeah, originally it... a theme. Uh, uh, I said maybe unconsciously the theme yes. comes to Sister. my feelings and I create yeah. them, but not necessarily. I not always go with the theme in particular. With an intention, yeah. No, not with yeah. an intention. Boy. It's a, it's a, a communion with my my sculpture. Really, I I feel I'm uh, like uh, in a, uh, in a, uh, on a cloud when I am yes. working <laughs> this material. Yeah. Uh, so so can you tell us how uh, on this cloud? How did you get to New York? Because my understanding is that lately you came back from New York, and I think it's very interesting uh, for both of you. Uh, the beauty of digitalization, although Salma, I would have preferred real life events. This is, let's confess, the beauty of digitalization that enabled these two artists uh, to reach to New York and other places in the world from our wounded and, 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 and broken city. So Lina, uh, can, you, uh, can you share with us, and then after we move to Magda, how lately uh, you have exhibited in New York, how you were approached, uh, etc., and in Marseille yeah. and everywhere. Yeah. Yes. Um, uh, uh, usually, I galleries called me abroad uh, through Instagram. That is the the advantage of is Instagram that we can uh, exhibit our uh, artworks. So uh, I was uh, called and selected to to uh, participate in an exhibition at Agora Gallery in New York. So, um, they, so, found uh, you. they found you on Instagram. I didn't in, approach yeah. them. They found yes, you. Yes, on Instagram. And uh, so uh, by mail, you know, now they, <laughs> they approach you. And yes. uh, I, I said, uh, it is uh, a big, uh, it's worth it. Even it, uh, it it is costly, and and I have to do a, a financial sacrifice efforts. Uh, it worth it to be uh, to put in foot uh, foot on in in the city of contemporary arts. Uh, yes. So uh, it and, was and, really and, yeah. How was the experience? Uh, it was like you felt really. Uh, it was a really a, 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 a great experience, a, a different experience. You know, it's a, like a, on a huge scale, like the space. Yes. The gallery yes. is huge, the space is huge. Uh, the, uh, at the reception, a crowd. Did people. you sell? Did you sell? Yes, yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Yes, we were uh, four artists among twelve. We we could uh, sell, and it's um, it's uh, a, so, a real challenge because I am a Lebanese going there. Ça. Nobody knows me, uh, uh, so uh, so they, this is to say that art, art. Yeah, yeah. Mm. So 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 this is also to say like that. Really, art is universal when it touches you. Wherever you come from, it can touch someone if they're in the US, in Africa, wherever uh, it is not really related to a geography in this sense. It's much more related. It's coming from emotions and from a geography, but, sure. but it has a universal, actually, a universal reach uh, when it touches someone. And uh, Magda also, uh, Magda, also you have been uh, on, 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 
on the high in internationalization. Uh, you have exhibited a lot in the UAE. Obviously, uh, you live there, but I would also like you to share your experience uh, in, like, in also this international recognition that you have started. You know, you're not already in perhaps the museums you dream to be in, but like this, this trajectory of internationalization, how did you, how were you identified? And also to tell us, um, you mentioned the uh, open call of, uh, of Sotheby's, but if you can tell us about other um, initiatives and uh, about in particular something that is very uh, dear to me, that is your participation to an art camp in Jordan um, sponsored by UNESCO to promote peace and that included various Arab artists. Uh, I yes. think this is also very interesting if you can share with us. And, uh, and if both of you also can share with us, who are your buyers? Are they mostly Lebanese? Are they from the Lebanese diaspora? Uh, or are they foreigners from all over? I'm very interested in knowing uh, who, uh, who is buying uh, Lebanese artists, uh, if you know who are the ones who are buying. Um, yeah. and, and, and tell us also, uh, Lina is experiencing and, and exploring PVC, and you are exploring NFT. So, yeah. <laughs> so can you tell us also about uh, this, this, new, uh, this new field and, and why are you exploring it and, and, uh, and what is your ambition with this respect? Uh, just just a reminder, we still have 12 minutes, so if you can okay. say it briefly. Thank you. I will, I will be very quick. Uh, but we I started a bit late, Jafar. Can we have five more minutes? Well, no, Salma. I think the, the yeah, Shu uh, Salma. Sure. Uh, five minutes or 10 more minutes because we started at 10. Okay, thank you, Jafar. Thank you, Salma. Yalla, if need be. Okay, I will start to be very quick. Uh, um, uh, I started with the NFT because I liked uh, the animation part of it. I was able to animate my uh, portraits and through animation, it made me uh, like express more the emotions. Uh, NFT is just like another medium, like sculpture, like um, a prints or like any other uh, artistic medium. So to digitize my work and be able to animate the my animated artistically made me uh, gave me the opportunity to express uh, in a different way and also it gave me the opportunity the access to this internationalization that you spoke about Nicole. So with um, with also open calls I apply uh, and I I'm I'm very happy to be selected. Uh, like recently, I got selected. My NFT got selected uh, in a global open call out of eighty artists to to exhibit in LA. Uh, it was exhibited in LA, and out of the eighty, they selected only twelve artists to put their work on the billboard in in the streets of LA. Uh, a huge digital. Billboard. Which one was it? Which one was uh, it of you? Uh, determination. It's called determination. It's called determination. Yes, <laughs> and, <laughs> and uh, it was. But, but why uh, NFT? Why are you interested in? And I mean, as an artist who likes collage and photography, yes. and why NFT? Just because it takes you uh, to um, because of internationalization, or is there anything in the process itself that? Yes that interests you the process interests me as well because like i said artistically it it brought my figures to life like if you see the hope as nft you would see her hair flying and she's breathing and she's moving ah, hello. So you you can express really uh, all these emotions that i try to do it because i focus in my composition a lot on the movement and yes. the feeling and this you feel like she's uh, you must stand up so in the in the in digital animation you can really bring this to life so it was artistically very interesting to me and uh, the process of it is really interesting uh, because i spent weeks and weeks trying to construct 
piece by piece and paper by paper and photo by photo the, the work. And the digital is actually deconstructing again this because you have to deconstruct all because it starts with a final JPEG of my of the final photograph of my paint painting. And then I have to deconstruct it into layers on Photoshop. So layers and layers and layers, and then animate those layers again. So it's construction and deconstruction again. So this is what interested me. What is, uh, yeah. As, uh, as reversing the, the physical process into digital. So yeah, what, what really draws my attention listening to both of you is, is, is uh, two similarities that I'm discovering now as well, is this, this, uh, this passion for the movement, both of you, and which is very feminine, this, this movement that is, uh, you know, you mentioned through NFT and Lena in, in her sculptures that I see behind her and this movement of the hand, which is something very feminine. And also what I love personally uh, 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 in these times where everybody is rushed is that at least um, also you are in processes that are long and that you are not afraid of allowing time to deconstruct and reconstruct and explore, which is also what art is about taking the time and the breath and and giving this time for breathing uh, in moments where everything is about just uh, having an end product. Uh, what I would like to uh, to move to uh, a few questions. Uh, also, just before we move to the more general questions, uh, a few general questions. Can you tell us about this UNESCO art camp and the piece? um you know this experience yes for unesco art camp i was uh, invited i was nominated so i i didn't apply to it i got nominated to participate and to represent lebanon uh, as an artist in the unesco uh, it was the theme building uh, piece uh, through bridges of cultures and it's answers exactly what you said Nicole that uh, art is universal and uh, art speaks to many cultures and and only through art you can build uh, bridges to peace as well it sounds like a bit uh, philosophical but it's true because uh, the, the art uh, the, the people relate to art and they feel whatever you're putting on on this piece of art and they it allows you to communicate and uh, and I've. Um, so you worked uh, alone, a specific sculpture, a specific uh, um, uh, a piece for, for this art I camp, worked, or was it yes. a collaborative process? I worked on two pieces, and uh, we were like uh, 25 artists from the Arab world, everyone working on his own uh, thing, but we were all together in a, in a, in a university campus in Ajman. Uh, in in the UAE, and uh, we donated one of uh, the pieces to UNESCO, and it's now in uh, Andorra camp in UNESCO, and it will be exhibited next year in June in uh, headquarters how long, in Paris. How, how long was the the camp? It was ten days intensive. We were working so, like from eight to uh, eight p.m. And uh, how did you? Growing. Yeah, and how did you uh, experiment this? Uh, I mean, being together with other Arab artists, uh, do you miss uh, both of you, Lina, actually, uh, in Lebanon? Is it uh, in, a, in a country where there are no, uh, no support structures for artists or very little? Um, did this uh, Magda experience with the community of other artists, even if each one was working alone, uh, did this uh, empower you? Did you long for something like that more? And I would like you from this, both of you, please, uh, to share with us your ideas as we spoke. Like, um, what could we, uh, especially that we are with the Goethe Institute here and with Iptidi, I think it's really nice uh, to propose, if you have any ideas, suggestions, what you as artists would suggest, uh, envision that we could do, that we could create to promote Lebanese artists, uh, both, I mean, in terms of marketing abroad 
and in terms of empowering uh, communities here and young artists and emerging artists, what can we provide? Because I uh, have the feeling that artists are really uh, uh, each one doing it his, like finding his way. Yeah. Um, look, the community factor is very important because in the camp I experienced that. And uh, the fact that we, we didn't only work alone, but there was a lot of socialization and uh, exchanging exchange, social exchange and cultural exchange. We got to learn about each one other's country, the culture and, uh, and this cultural exchange helped a lot. And uh, it really brought us together. Like we, st we are still communicating together until now, the whole group. So it's really important, the community, the the residency, if you want to say, yes. of artists together, it's, it's yeah. really important to share culture and to share exchange. And, and maybe more you, ideas, uh, yeah. Maybe or also in, in, uh, encouraging exhibition with the uh, uh, financial support uh, abroad uh, to uh, um, show uh, the art, Lebanese art, because it's uh, uh, I, I'm talking about this because it costs, costs a lot to the artist. They have to ship their artworks. They have to do uh, uh, by themselves uh, every uh, uh, financial fees. So we need uh, uh, a support, a financial support to to be represented abroad. So also, it yeah, and maybe be not only financial. Idea. Mahek, Lina, it might not be only financial. It's also yeah. like a relationship to some galleries, to some uh, also, events, also, to some yes, fairs. Open right? event yeah. fest, but here we have to take the plane to go uh, yeah, somewhere yeah. else. Yeah, and, and financial. <laughs> Everything, but it, because and I, financial. by experience, yeah. because by experience, I know I participated in, in uh, many uh, exhibition abroad, and uh, it uh, uh, without any uh, help from others. So I, I have to uh, count on myself to uh, do everything, all the steps. So uh, we need also the support. Also, it, it, we have, we, it's uh, a plus, like, uh, and it's important to have exchange with other artists with, and to communicate with and exchange ideas. So it is uh, like a whole package. Yes, it's, uh, Magda. Be interesting. Yeah, and Magda, actually, yesterday we were also talking about this, like um, that it could be interesting, right, to have some big fairs in Beirut. We're not having any fairs anymore, where we could have collectors or foundations. Uh, so, like what do you? Fairs what are you, the, yeah, fairs. Can you share yeah. your reflection. Fairs are really important because uh, like international fairs are only restricted to galleries and gallery represented artists. Yeah. And for yeah. emerging artists like us to be discovered, like we have to knock on the doors of the galleries and they don't even respond because they're fully booked or fully planned. So um, I, I'm, I'm like suggesting maybe something, a plan or a program for to 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 encourage uh, the visibility of emerging artists and encourage galleries uh, to see them and to explore them and to discover them. Maybe a fair led a curated fair, not like anyone can uh, yes. participate, but a, a high end or a good quality curated fair uh, of, uh, by artists only, and then you can in collaboration and like an institute, a big institute and a big foundation can uh, collaborate with high end uh, or good g galleries to invite them to this fair as uh, as uh, like an open day, open fair uh, to discover the artist. Like this, this bridge, this um, uh, obstacle of communication between uh, between them. This would be a good idea, and and this is what I experienced through NFT because there's no walls in NFT. Like you can, this is how I got discovered by big galleries in the NFT yes. world because no middle, no middleman, no merchants, exactly, actually. no art exactly. merchants. So it yeah. was really easy, and I wish in the physical world it could uh, a fair could part of facilitate this because a lot of people like are talented and they don't get discovered uh, 
in, a, in the right uh, channel, in the right communication channel, and also exchange, international exchange residencies, open call for emerging or mid-career uh, artists is really important as well. Yes. And actually, I, uh, uh, another point. So, Selma, we have projects we can think of <laughs> to them to 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 make the Lebanese and the Levant scene uh, uh, young emerging artists uh, more visible, um, potentially with the European partner. Um, another another question that is not only um, actually. Um, with this visibility, what I would like to finish on is also um, the evolution of, of the sensitivity and the interest in art in Lebanon. Uh, in the last three years, despite the crisis or perhaps because of the crisis, uh, we were speaking of this together, both of you and me, that surprisingly uh, there has been an increased interest from uh, 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 buyers from the Lebanese public like a certain democratization of art and uh, maybe because of the crisis because people wanted the the ones who had money in the banks wanted to remove it from the bank and uh, and could buy uh, Lebanese artists and also because the artists perhaps have how, have also downgraded their ambitions uh, in terms of finances, like uh, they were maybe selling a bit cheaper. So can you comment a little bit on this? Uh, who, uh, who and, and also on this perhaps wave, we see a lot of collective events, collective exhibitions. It's a bit, it seems a bit scattered here and there. Some people wanting to ride the wave, others who are more structured. So what is your feeling about this? Is this satisfactory for you? Uh, do you uh, do you feel you need a more structured uh, a gallery that follows you rather than running here and there collectives? Uh, can you a bit just uh, comment on this uh, democratization of, of, of art in Lebanon, but at the same time also perhaps uh, um, the, 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 scatter, the scattered scene? I, I think um, for, for me, I'm not really concerned because uh, of the crisis and they wanted to, to uh, uh, bring out the, their money from the banks to buy. I, I I was selling before, so but it's true there was a reaction that they uh, wanted to invest in art. Maybe I don't know if really to invest in art because they love art or because uh, anyway. I think my art was not even before it was not uh, to an elite. I, I was uh, it was uh, for um, accessible for everyone. Art is not. Reserved to uh, to a certain person, it is uh, if we are sensitive 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 to uh, a shape or, or to a color or it it's um, I don't know the, the paintings or the sculpture speaks to us without having a background artistic background. It's uh, a, 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 it's uh, enough. It's an important. So the important is that it touched people. And, um, no, I mean financially uh, that they can afford you. <laughs> financially, uh, it depends. It depends. Uh, I maybe uh, we we manage for the plus, but not. I'm not. Uh, uh, I would say brade. Uh, I don't know what we call no, it. Yeah. No. Uh, I have my my uh, to respect yes. my uh, my art. Yeah. Uh, and. Uh, but um, what we say, uh, there is more exhibitions, more, uh, more, uh, like you say, from here, from there, collectives. Also, maybe it's a reaction of uh, the the situation, what way we are living. Maybe artists have more, uh, more uh, emotions to express. Yes, and uh, more, um, they are more suffering. They want to say what they want to say uh, through their uh, arts, maybe also this has contributed to this um, 
how we say to this uh, it's buzz, like sound, to this buzz, uh, to this buzz. Yes, yes, yes. to this uh, uh, This is my point of view. Uh, so yeah. I don't know. Uh, uh, so what but I you can still say. would like you 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 still would 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 like another kind of support as an artist, right? Like a more sure, sure, sure. Yeah. We, we can now. Now, currently, I'm I'm represented by Agora Gallery, so yes. I I feel it's uh, it it is more uh, it it it's, it could, it becomes more professional if you want. Yeah. More yeah, and uh, we need the support from galleries, uh, but uh, also a serious uh, on a serious level. Not uh, um, I would say not it's uh, partisanal. Yeah. Yes, I, that's what I mean. It's right. not uh, like jobs. Like it, it, it has to be a professional way. So and the uh, young lady. Ah, uh, <laughs> oui, pardon, Lina. Did you want to say anything else? No, no, no. That's uh, what I said. Uh, no, the professional way we want it. Yes. Mm. Yes. Yes. Magda. Uh, about the the buzz, uh, I feel it's a buzz that went uh, not only in Lebanon because of the crisis, but it was globally as well, because people understood that art is a good investment uh, when uh, when uh, especially about the devaluation of the currencies and so it's uh, it was a good way to like introduce new new people who never bought art to art and it's uh, it was good in a way. But like Lina said, you have to respect like your pricing and your stand as a, as an artist, and not go into this uh, this, um, this craze. Craze, yes. yeah. No? Yes. So uh, as long as you uh, respect your pricing and uh, and uh, uh, your your brand, you are a brand at the end of the day as well. It's, uh, it's yeah. You be immune to this all this you will uh, be building a sustainable uh, uh, way of um, producing and uh, and uh, being collected by collectors inside the crisis or outside the crisis so it, yeah for me I was, sure. so, so to to finish <laughs> uh, to finish i want to use your words magda as you say we are a brand i don't like the word brand for an artist but 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 it's your brand. Uh, I'm gonna use your words that I really like. Uh, you said to me, we are made actually of many experiences of life experiences and diversity. Our identity is not well defined, which I love because everybody now is speaking about identity, but our identity is not well defined. We are a mix of experiences of all experiences and the crossing of photos and images. Uh, uh, and so this is what you are trying to convey. And this is what your experience of life uh, at the crossroads with art is also leading you towards. So, so, and I think this is the beauty of, of art finally, and of artists uh, like you ladies, both of you, uh, whose art is crossing all borders, because actually it's not about an identity, even if we are from the Levant or from the Middle East, uh, that actually uh, we are a diversity and a mix of experiences. Uh, maybe we experience it here in this part of the world in a demultiplied way <laughs> with respect to other parts of the world. So this is why perhaps also uh, your art is is touching hearts uh, everywhere because it also comes from your heart. And um, I don't know, is there anything else you want to add or can I end uh, and conclude? Any Anything you would... Yes, yes, I yes, want Lina. to say... Yes, we have to be really uh, authentic to be um, ourselves because people feel when you do something for commercial or you do uh, like uh, i don't know it's uh, superficial you don't do it from your heart from your what you feel uh, people know it know it so be authentic and um, 
I am I am like this. I'm spontaneous, even in my words. I'm spontaneous, and um, and I think people like this spontaneity. And uh, maybe we have to look always in a positive way and be optimistic. This is uh, really important. Uh, after you are a we are master, a master of optimism. optimism. <laughs> we have um, even uh, we have many. Oh, uh, everyone has plenty of uh, many problems and difficulties, but uh, we, we are not uh, staying like this and cry. We have to evolve and to walk. So what's your next? On. What's your next sculpture title? <laughs> My next. Uh, sometimes they, I I do not prepare titles uh, before. I said spontaneous, and when they come, they, uh, they so now we don't know the title with with them. Okay, Magda. Magda, the next one is after determination. What is it? <laughs> <laughs> also, I don't know because no, no. Uh, I'm just kidding yeah. to to say that like you you seem both yeah. to be so. One is optimistic, the other is determined. Determined. It's very empowering yeah. at the end. Yeah. Finally, because, uh, the, very empowering. the second uh, series I worked on uh, also inspired from Gibran as well, that we learn from our past to, to construct our future. And this is exactly you said that right, the, the, we are made of so many different experiences. And uh, the collage is uh, and the choice of the photos as well represent our diversity as human beings. And it's I use in the second series, I I stay away also from the focus on only Beirut because I use it metaphorically. Yes. Only, but to portray this diversity and that we have to look deeper into each and every human being to see what he is made of and what it, what are the experiences he's been to to create to to ha to have help him to 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 be the the person who he is. So it's a master, message master. of diversity and. Uh, and uh, and this is the way we we find peace uh, if we if we embrace our diversity as as people and uh, thank you nico uh, nicole thank i have you. one thing yes. one thing also to say yes um, afterwards goethe will cut us so please yes, yes. let's finish no, yes for, for for those who has hasn't the haven't the opportunity to see my sculpture in New York, I have the part two. It's uh, here uh, currently oh, yes. at Galerie Sheriff Tabel. If yes, they I want to feel to uh, uh, a little bit happiness and joyful and colorful sculpture, they may go there and. Uh, and uh, discover them. So, yes, please uh, let's meet. Let's meet in real life in Galerie Sherif Tabet in Beirut for the ones who are in Beirut. And I really want to thank you, uh, both of you, really, um, not only for this talk, but really because I, preparing this talk, I have delved in your universe, each of you, delved. <laughs> delved in your website, delved in your universe, and I really, uh, it empowered me, me too. I'm not a painter, I'm an artist in another, uh, in writing, but... Um, yeah, Nic and yeah Nicole, it's really I want to tell you, uh, yes. there is no age for art and to start something. I told you this, so <laughs> I encourage you to do what bon, you ça have. Off, 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 off. <laughs> and uh, Salma, no and age. I want again, I want again uh, really um, to thank you, Salma, in particular, and the Goethe Institute for giving us this chance to share uh, such moments of uh, creativity and and uh, and aliveness. So really, thank you, and for sharing the beauty of Lebanon. And uh, I want to say that uh, tomorrow uh, we have. Um, I think you would love him if you speak Arabic. Uh, so you'll have an exercise in Arabic also to listen to Bassam Abu Diab. Uh, he's an amazing choreographer and dancer from Lebanon. And then uh, the week after, the week after, we have also beautiful people from Iraq and Jordan um, and uh, an artist from Jordan, from Iraq, a mural painting. I, I invite you also, both of you, to listen to, to them because they are inspiring and it could create some connections in the Levant. So thank you. And Salma, I let you close.
Thank you also for you. <laughs> Amy, to be honest, for me, there's really nothing left to say. Thank you so much for, for, um, for this um, inspiring talk and uh, for your contributions. And it's really been a pleasure. And um, I'm really happy that you were having time uh, to, to be with us and to inspire us with your work and with your journey. Thank you so much. And to you, of course, Nicole as well. Thank you so much for inviting these amazing uh, artists. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for having Thank us. You. Bye. Merci. Bye. See you.